Hey, Sonic Grover here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to some Super Collider. We are going to be doing a series in Super Collider this year, and it's basically dynamic amplitude or amplitude modulation. I want to dynamically change amplitude in real time for not just sound synthesis, you know, sine tones and all that, but also for sound files, seeing if I can make like a drum loop very expressive with dynamic change in amplitude. So this is going to be a series. I don't know how many parts. Um, it's going to be between five and seven parts, maybe eight parts, depending on what I discover in the future. Um, I have four parts for you in the queue for January. And uh, the first couple of videos will be just working with oscillators and sine tones and triangle waves and all that. So bear with me. It might just be randomly, it might sound like it's randomly working with those kinds of tones and waveforms, but there's a purpose to this. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and review some oscillation and some control oscillators and all that. So let's go ahead and begin. We're gonna start with a function, a very simple synth. We've got a sine oscillator at 300 Hertz with the amplitude of 20% uh, or 0.2. We're gonna go ahead and play it. It's gonna be pretty boring, but it's our function. Sounds boring, right? We can add some uh, s some interesting things to it, like one interesting thing, and, and that is the exclam2, which creates it as a, a converts it rather to a stereo signal. So we're gonna also go ahead and put it in a block of code. So the function is gonna have a, a label and we will have a variable, which is our signal, same signal, but now with the exclam2, we will make it a stereophonic signal or stereo. So much better, much more evenly distributed around our head. All right, now, you know, to prevent uh, stacking sense, you know, as we are changing values, we will go ahead and change values um, in this way here, as you can see, um, but with a very effective way that just doesn't cause the stacking of sense, as you can see in this uh, node tree here, this gray node tree under me. So let's go ahead and try our, 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 our tilde my sign uh, function. We have the frequency, you know, as, a, as an argument now at 300, as we had heard before, with a very small or very uh, soft, I should say, amplitude. I might even just kind of make it, I don't know. That, that's a little low for me. Let's, let's do that. <laughs> um, with our variable and then uh, adding our play message there. Same thing here. Well, that's why I did it softly because I can hear it really loudly. So let's just do 0.1. There we go. Let's try this at 0.1 because that's going to be softer. Very close in frequency. It's the lower tones or the mid tones that are, uh, or mid frequency. Uh, that sounds a little bit better. Now, let's go ahead and control the signal using other variables. So now we're gonna keep it at, you know, that's fine, let's keep it there. I, I put it there for a reason, so we're gonna keep it there. Um, we're gonna keep our amplitude rather low. And in, you know, in addition to having a signal variable, we're gonna also have a control variable, which I will call freak noise. You can call it anything you want, but I like to keep it very specific to the function. What is this? This is a frequency oscillation. So it's not, it's not a matter of uh, the pitch per se, but how it is controlled. So I have an LF noise Ugen uh, outputting eight instances per second ranging frequencies between 200 and 1000 hertz. So this step noise is the oscillation controlling our sine wave. Let's go ahead and hear it. Now let's go ahead and change the amp in real time. Yeah. 
You'd think that 0.5 is not that much in amplitude, but apparently for this sine tone it is. So it could be my computer, just could be. It's been a long time since I've been in Super Collider, so I'm a little rusty. Let's continue. Uh, let's modulate this amplitude. So um, in addition to outputting, you know, many frequencies per second with a, a range of 2,000, 200 rather, 2,000 hertz, we're also going to control, uh, or we're going to add a modulation variable to our amplitude. Um, so far it's going to be a simple sine tone, just traveling, you know, traversing over the course of, uh, you know, one cycle per second. Um, with the range, I, you know, again, I think this is just too much, so we'll just... Just keep it at two, maybe? Uh, low low to that point. I mean, I don't know. Let's just leave it as it was originally placed. I'll, I'll deal with it later. Um, but anyway, if you are, are catching what's going on, it is um, the, the volume control, basically, you know, the amplitude modulating from a soft point, a soft amp amplitude of one hundredth of, um, of, of the maximum uh, amplitude there to um, 0.5 just traversing over the sine wave there uh, one one si one cycle per second uh, same thing with our frequency let's go ahead and hear how that sounds so you can already hear the expression and um, I kind of like it and this is just with sine tones. Let's continue. Uh, we will be adding maybe four instances uh, per second, both for the uh, amplitude modulation and also our frequency modulation. So let's see how that sounds. I can see that this would be very effective for something like an arpeggiation. It's it's almost like an arpeggiator, but for amplitude. Now it is random. Now of course we can make that a lot more consistent and linear, but uh, for now we're just working with indeterminacy. All right, let's go ahead and add even more arguments. So we have uh, our amplitude control set at eight right now. So our amplitude control is going to be at uh, eight instances per second and then also our minimum amplitude value and our maximum, you know, as, as before, you know, this was the default as I had before. And so we can change those in real time. Also our freak noise will be our uh, frequency control, our output here set at eight to be changed later. And then also our 200 to 1000 Hertz range also to be set later. Let's go ahead and see what happens. It almost sounds like the lower end has kind of a sustain, but it's probably more perception than anything. There's a little bit of a, a muddiness between each instance. Of course, I would look to clean up at a, at a later time. All right, so that is pretty much working with oscillations, you know, controls, you know, seeing the potential of amplitude control with frequency output, but also maybe in the future sound file output, you know, something with, uh, you know, an ambient sound file, for instance. Let's go ahead and continue. And this is just now working with shapes. So, you know, um, you know, this could be its own separate video, really, but let's go ahead and see what shapes this amplitude, this future amplitude modulator can be. So we'll start with our sine tone. And this is pretty basic. Um, we've got our We've got our sine tone, or whether it's noise or a sound file, whatever it is, it, we're starting at that neutral value zero, increasing to the maximum amplitude, falling to the trough, you know, to that non-positive value before reaching zero again. So there's kind of a swell in amplitude, a complete drop in amplitude, and then going back to that neutral. In in the case of amplitude, that's that's about halfway, if, if we're very clean about our... Um, our code there. Sorry for my very blurry face with this uh, diagram here. LF saw, 
is a little bit different than the sine tone. We do have kind of a different movement. We are starting at the neutral value at zero, going to the maximum value, and then dropping, not even linearly, not even you know decreasing uh, over time, but a straight drop down to the trough. Uh, so a straight drop down to the trough before scaling all the way back up, and then a straight instantaneous drop down to the trough. And this you'll see in future videos how, you know, how sound files are affected by this. And there are some nice patterns to be had, so that's quite nice. Um, L of tri is, you know, that same triangular shape as saw, except instead of a, an instantaneous drop to the non-positive non value, uh, we have just a kind of a linear descent over time. So a lot smoother, I would say, or maybe not smooth. I wouldn't say smoother is the right word in, in terms of sound. It's, it's, I would say, less percussive in sound, which you will hear in probably next week's video. The LF par. So LF par is different than sine tone in that it starts at the maximum volume first before descending all the way to the trough, you know, that non-positive, and then to zero. So we start high. We start loud, per se, if you want to call it that in a musical way. We start at forte and then descend. That's how the cycle starts. So if you want to start loud, if you want to start at, a, at, at an impact, you know, kind of an impactful way of doing it percussively in Super Collider, LF par is probably a way to go. LF cube is probably the same as uh, in terms of uh, uh, motion and speed between, you know, the peak and the trough of the wave, but we are starting at zero. And I believe I do compare Sinos and uh, LF cube uh, in a little bit here. And then LF pulse. This we might play around with uh, another time, and, and that is, um, you can see, is it LF Pulse? It, it, it's one of these where I feel like this could be a very effective bypass of some sound, complete, you know, whether it's with sound or not. Um, so maybe using it as like a, a product of uh, bypassing something. All right, and um, just some comments real quick with Saw. Uh, do be sure that you are not including any additional phase argument. It doesn't need a phase argument. And we do need to include the width argument for pulse. And uh, the same is true for var saw. Let's go ahead and compare real quick uh, some of these before we wrap up this video. So yes, um, let's, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start with, um, we'll start with sine os and lf saw. So you can just see the difference in motion there. Uh, so, you know, that, that is dynamically quite different. Let's see if we can find a similar one. And I think it was uh, sign off with, yes, uh, yeah. These are more or less the same, except the phase is a little different. With sign off, we're starting at zero, and with LF par, we are starting at one. But you can see the motion dynamically is the same. So this, all this code for you to try will be put in a pastebin page in the description below. And so you can work with uh, some, some different uh, oscillations and, and mix and match and adding phase values and, and all of that. But just do be careful with your values and, and probably plot out the, the diagram before working with actual sound and, and actual oscillators. So thank you so much for watching and listening. Be on the lookout for video number two going into more dynamic amplitude, maybe with some more complex oscillations. Take care.